the coordinator of the international affairs and health of Fiocruz, Pedro Burger. Bem-vindo. Ele é mestre em economia política internacional. Um, he's a master in uh, international economics by the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro and specialist in public health in Fiocruz, where he was the president and coordinator of institutional relationships. And as speakers for this panel, we invite the chief of international affairs of the Ministry of Health, Alexandre Gislene. He's going to do the presentation government agenda online. Uh, he's a diplomat and he's also uh, ha is a bachelor. He's a legal advisor and he worked in Geneva as a diplomat and also in Washington, Brazil and Havana's emb embassies. He works with uh, at the Ministry of Foreign Relations. He's she, a coordinator of Institute of App, uh, applied Research is a Graziella Zucoloto with the presentation Engagement Innovation Agenda. She's a doctor and master in economy by the Univers Federal University of Rio de Janeiro and the University of Sao Paulo. She was a researcher, visiting researcher at GTG at Technique University in Berlin. She's a researcher in the Directory of Industrial Policy of the Inst Institute of Technological Research, and she's also an advisor in the Ministry of Technology and Innovation. She, at IPEA, she works works with indicators and uh, technological innovation policy, especially industrial and health. And she works with social technology and social impact. She's a tenure uh, researcher at the Fiocruz, Patricia Bosa. The presentation will be scientific and academic agenda. The doctor by the University of uh, she's a doctor in molecular biology in uh, Fiocruz and Israel Hospital and Harvard Medical Sioux. She's a member of Brazilian Scientific uh, uh, Society and also in other institutions in uh, underdeveloped countries. And she coordinates uh, challenges in health of the S20 Brazil. So I pass the floor to Pedro Burger. Good afternoon, you all. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I would like to thank the invitation to Director Marisa Zuma, uh, Mr. Akira Roma, also Gisele, she's the coordinator of this symposium. And I was seeing virtually in the morning, the symposium has much of hard research and now we're going to relax a little bit although uh hard research is your daily life we're going to talk talk a little bit about policies and now we are in the chair of the g20 this year and we have a discussion uh, that is very relevant a forum of the greatest economies in brazil in of the world and we actually have 19 countries and we have the european union and african union and brazil coordinates this forum that discuss in the most high level the main global issues and we thought it was important that have a coordination of the symposium together with biomanguinhos and to socialize more for this group that is here present uh, in person and virtually do who, what, how is the progress and how this forum works and how is the progress of the works that has been carried out now we invited three sectors 
And now that we have a more attentive perspective to the sciences and the health fields, and we brought one part of the governmental sphere because G20 has two pathways that are finance and economy and the Sherpas uh, pathway and also with the social G20 with several engagement groups to bring for this uh, the, the, the standpoint of many societies that work with the government. So the scientific field, academia, there are several engagement groups or this, and we brought the gov governmental fields being represented by uh, Mr. Alexandre Gislemi, and also two groups, and uh, also the TU20, that is the group for the the think tanks for the G20, also S20, which is the area of sciences coordinated by the uh, science academias and entities in the G20. With this, we seek to give you a perspective of how this work has been carried out and what is the civil society and the scientific community has contributed, has been contributing with these issues that will be treated and approached by the G20. So I'd like to thank the participation of my colleagues here in person and by Ambassador Alexandre uh, Gisleni virtually. I will pass the floor to my uh, uh, the speaker, Alexandre Gisleni. He's, he um, works with the Sher Sherpa pathways and the health field and i thank you very much to have you here and thank you pedro very much i hope you heard you can hear me hear you hear me and i hope i can share my thoughts with the colleagues that are here and uh, the health agenda uh, it doesn't allow me to do everything that I would like to do, so I can't, couldn't be there in person. So with the opportunity that I have, it's very important to be able to uh, what has been been doing in terms of health in the G20. Where is the chairship of Brazil being pointing to? And the first thing that I think we could clarify is that there are two bodies in the structure of the G20 are two we have the scientific area and that is coordinated by the Ministry of Health and also the force tax task in uh, finance that is coordinated by the Ministry of Finance in Brazil and we presented we took this advantage of the presidency to bring this ambitious agenda, transformative one that is more like Brazil and that can constitute a progress in this uh, that effectively can work with the other parties. And considering that we are within a historical window, that is the fact that we have four uh back to back pres presidencies of uh underdevelopment countries which are a minority within the G20 so uh, among 19 greater economies in the world and uh, greatest economy in the, the world we have the developing underdevelopment countries so in 200 to 2022 we had Indonesia and we 2023 we had India 2024, we have Brazil, and 2025, we have South Africa. And from 2026, 25, we close the cycle with all the underdeveloped country ha will have had the chair. And in 2026, we take over again with the presidency of the United States. And this, in tr practical terms, the current a system the next time we will take uh, the chairman chairmanship of 
the G20 it will be in 2044 and I hope I am doing something else uh, in life but we have a unique opportunity in this generation to be able to influence the debate regarding health and giving a contribution uh, uh, the Brazilian contribution to this debate so we have these two bodies in the G20 that uh, deal with health, and we have a very comprehensive agenda. In the case of the fourth task, the joint force task in finance, we have a very diff diversified agenda. We are proposing, for example, a debate about how the uh, contaminants in health should be an indicator for decision-making process with the financial agents, especially the Ministry of Finance. And overall, we have a proposal that it seems to me to be very uh, wise and to be adept for health. And this means that we are proposing that, that the country members of the G20 that are creditors and they are engaged in bilateral uh, relationships and partnerships and that they are willing to uh, uh, have this partnership with uh, that in that country so that part of the payment of the external debt will be ex would be exchanged for investments in the national health systems in these countries so what is the sense in this we see a very con relevant opportunity in the moment that we have it's not an actual crisis, international crisis, but are we getting into this point in the situation that we have this tension in several countries? We have more than 20 uh, countries that are facing hardships and the payment of the their debts, uh, mostly because of the crisis generated by the pandemics. And there, there's also expectation of the international community that there is more investment in the health, health sector so that the world is more prepared for an eventual new uh, pandemic and that most experts say that it will happen uh, at some point. So how can you make compatible these two sides of the equations? In one line, you have one hand you have the financial restriction, and the other hand you have this need to uh, higher expenditures. Uh, so um, we do this uh, consensually, of course, and with discussions uh, so that countries can direct a part of the payment for uh, investments in health and nationally, uh, ensuring more safety, global safety, in a preparation of future pandemics that uh, may happen. So this what is paid in the service of health it was almost four hundred and fifty million dollars, uh, and this is more than the investment, the global investments in social issues and health issues worldwide in the developed countries. So this is one of the proposals that we have that is being discussed, and we hope to move forward with this and the understanding that what this means and its feasibility. And we have, we're hopeful that, and, and we're uh, confident that, that some countries will realize the beneficial potency and we are going to see if this can be uh, is feasible and how this can be unfold. So uh, we're going to talk about the G20 work group, which is a body to deal with the health issues within the G20. We have a very much diversified agenda and 
Again, it's very ambitious as well and great issues such as long COVID, the labor force and health and microbian resistance. And we have been treating, a, a approach, uh, addressing uh, artificial intelligence, uh, the digital health initiative or W. WHO, but we have two main products that we would like to deliver, two proposals, and one of them is the issue of uh, climate change and health. We would like to uh, take the advantage of this uh, Brazilian chairmanship to enhance this specific aspect and of course climate change is a more comprehensive subject but our understanding is that the first se sectors for public policies where this is felt is in the health field especially because of the due to natural disasters and unfortunately we are seeing what is happening in the Rio Grande do Sul area and it's very the perspective of having uh, outbreaks of diseases uh, which is very high with the contaminated water and in addition we also have been seeing the indirect impact in health through the prevalence uh, area change which means uh, also very well known case of the Brazilian audience, we are familiarized with the dengue situation, it, which has reached, reached regions in Brazil that we've never seen cases before in Northeast and the South and in countries in the world that has never have seen uh, any cases. So the dengue reached Japan, for example, Italy, France, and it is in other places in the world and also the United States. It's coming back to Chile now. So being in, it's in the north of Argentina, which shows that actually the dengue, uh, the prevalence of the dengue region it's not only a, a problem for Brazil, but it's a global problem. And it has to do with uh, also with the uh, global heating. And also we have this pasture production of the uh, Aedes aegypti mosquito. So what can we reach in this area and what can we accomplish in the area field, which, which is a very comprehensive area in itself? So we would like to point out two issues, which is the equity for uh, access to health systems, because not everyone will be uh, affected in the same way, and not all regions, not all parts of the population. So if you treat this horizontally, without like taking into consideration the different social differences and the impacts of climate it's a way of frustrating the international community and humanity regarding the efforts of prevention and combat to diseases. So this is one of the aspects. And the other one that we like to help it is one health concept, which is have been this very much discussed, and it has to be uh, treated in depth still, in greater depth. And one of the uh, axes is the micro microbian actions, and we will have an event in September, and we are discussing this microbian resistance, and we want to discuss these issues of One Health that are um, being uh, addressed in globally, because we do not believe that the G20 should replace the discussions that are happening in the international spheres. 
we the G20 represents 19 countries and two regional organizations one is the european and, and african it's not all the globe but the g20 has a power to uh, set and to call uh, actions and we want to make this advance in the multilateral organs and of course we're not we're not going to compete with the united nations the who but we want to help these organizations to carry out works and so that the g20 make these actions uh, move forward together with the international bodies Uh, Mr. Ambassador, can you hear me? So we uh, lost your image here. So to uh, complete my presentation, I would not, I have to talk about uh, since uh, that what is the main proposal that we are bringing for the consideration of the G20, which is the creation of an alliance to for innovation and local production of uh, medicines, uh, drugs, and diagnosis materials. And this is initiatives that regard especially the experience that we had during the COVID pandemic when international markets and we have to recognize that they failed and we had episodes that we could call as a, a health nationalism and that which flows were disrupted leaving many countries without supplies of basic materials for to face the pandemic so considering this experience uh, a key element is to prepare not only for a new pandemic but a health emergency uh, emergencies that may happen in national international level and that there is more where guarantee of supply globally and that the production of these materials that are produced in the field air, uh, health area and this means to support the greater support of uh, production of vaccines medicines and material for diagnosis in latin america africa and other countries in the world that have uh this uh, safety of production uh, that can be unstable. So we are launching this debate in the sphere of the health work group and the expectation that we have is that we can move forward with the consensus until the ministerial uh, meeting. Uh, and the, the meeting is pro, uh, predicted to happen in October 31 in Rio de Janeiro, an occasion that if everything goes right, we will be celebrating uh, the success to move forward with this initiative and that has uh, the potential to transform the pharmaceutical profile in our region and to transform in the other I would like to uh, welcome you for the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity, and I'll be at your disposal for questions, comments, some doubts, and questions that the, my colleagues might have. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Ambassador Alexander Gislani. I hope you uh, you heard the applause uh, from our audience. I would like to ask you if you can stay till the end uh, for the Q and A session, or if you would rather answer questions now, if you won't have a chance to uh, stay till the end. I can stay till the end. That's great news. So I'm going to go straight to the uh, next talk, and at the end we'll have Q and A in general. Uh, thank you again, um, uh, Ambassador Alexander, for your availability. 
We'll go now from the uh, government arena on the uh, on the health issues within the uh, Sherp Sherpa Trail and the G20. We'll be inviting our researcher Graziella from IPA to talk about the work at IPEA, which is uh, 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 one of the main actors at the G20. Uh, the Fire Cruise is all also a member on the board of, of trustee of the executive board. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to initially, on, on behalf of IPEA, to, to thank you for the invitation to be here. I'm going to share with you, IPEA, as was said before, is one of the members of the T20, and I'll share with you our research agenda agenda in health innovation. We have a large agenda, a wide assessment. For over a year, I've been assessing the PVPs. I hope I'll give you food for thought. I'll give you the outcomes, the results, and because we hope to launch a book in September on the 60th anniversary at IPEA with some results, I hope to uh, uh, generate curiosity and associate this agenda with the goals of the G20 that are completely integrated. This agenda, this assessment, um, we're doing it for, we've been doing it for over a year. It was a request by the Ministry of Health. It's a demand by the Ministry itself. It's a bit technical. I hope that the graphs won't, but, but won't make it too boring. It's, I'm gonna talk about the PBPs. I know there's there are foreigners in the audience. You might not be aware of these political issues. You know, the PDPs have the goal, complementary goals. I'll talk about two of them that are the most important. We're talking about PDPs, um, uh, for internships or productive development, expansion of access to strategic products and access to, to, medis, to medications that the population wouldn't have access to otherwise if it weren't for the public health system. The, these are expensive uh, medicines like HIV, hepatitis C, cancer. So the expansion of this access is very important in the PDPs and the reduction of productive and technological vulnerability of SUS through public laboratories. How do we try to do that? Promoting technological development, exchange of information, and rationalization of purchasing power. Most of you know these things, but I thought it was important to list them anyway. This is a simplified scheme of how the PDT, PDPs work. We're talking about partnerships between private companies, whether national or multinational and public laboratories. They transfer technology, the companies transfer technology to public laboratories as soon as long as they they have guarantees as for the purchase of medicines for a period of 10 years. Also important to the PDPs is that the IPA must be nationalized at the end of the process. In, in very simple terms, if you know PDPs, you know it's a bit more complex than this. This is just a table of PDPs. You can see that on this, on this website at the Ministry of Health. Um, med medications, um, participating institutions, last column demand can be broken into more than one laboratory between the laboratory and the bidding. If you're uh, curious, um, it's very updated at the website of the Ministry of Health. It's a bird's eye view of the PDPs, our work, our research project. We've been asked uh, to fulfill two objectives. We have to invert the order. Our idea was to start by running an assessment of the results of the PDP, the objectives, policy design, and many of you know some crit criticisms and needs to impro for improvement throughout the year. For years, we have many data banks that we can use to carry out this research. We're going to start off by uh, uh, by doing this. We have to invert the uh, classification policies. Uh, and uh, as for the Minister of Health, questioning the, the, uh, the prices of PDPs, whether in, in summary, if, if the, if the uh, purchases of medicines would be more expensive through the PDPs than otherwise, and why? If that was due to technology transfer, given the importance of this issue, we begin by answering this question. We have done some works on this, and now we're also doing this general assessment of policies. To answer that, we have several studies and uh, a very wide-ranging project. We have to look into the classification regulation government procurement. It was a wide-ranging project. We didn't really uh, focus only on the price. I'm saying that to talk about PDPs in our project. How do, uh, how is that related to all of these G20 goals? 
it's totally related because if you look at the G20 goals, some of them have been mentioned before in the health arena. They talk about strengthening national innovation systems and reduction of inequalities among populations and regions. And when we talk about PDPs, it's there, reducing inequalities because you're going to increase access to medications and try to make them cheaper and strengthening the national um, innovation systems because you're talking about increasing technological capabilities. This research and the goals of the G20 and the, and the health arena are complementary in a, in a big way. The strengthening local and national production and the working group has the, these goals and to direct PDP to the common good. PDP and health in many areas can be geared to enrichment, to aggrandizement, financial aggrandizement, to generating profits. She can generate profits, but you have to ensure greater access and greater equity. These two research lines and goals, they're complementary. I would also like to talk about the relationship between research and challenges and opportunities that we have in Brazil. Some data that I'll be showing you are the result of the research. And some, I'd like to mention that the PDP is cause and consequence of some of them. We're trying to see up to what point the PD PDP is related or caused as some of them or in, at, up to what extent it can be the result of them. So I brought you some data that are interesting to the uh, concerning the Brazilian scenario, the survey that we did for government procurement uh, for medicines. The ministry has all that those data, all the data that I'm telling you about. I'm not very good at this, I'm sorry. Uh, the line shows the real um, um, sums, there's no inflation here. The real value of government procurement when it comes to med medications between 2021 uh, 2000 and 2021, the government is, is spending more and more on medications. All the mechanisms to make medications cheaper become all the more important in view of this scenario. The second graph, I'd like to pay close attention to the columns. They re represent values, the values of the 20 medications that are most widely uh, frequently purchased by the SUS, the public health system. You don't need it, right? If I t um, thank you. With the 20 medications that are most frequently purchased by SUS, you have the values, the sum totals 2021. There is a COVID effect. But the 20 medications here, they represent at least 50% of government pur purchases. How many of them are PDPs? Some of them are PDPs. Have to take that into account when we mention PDPs and whether that's enough or not because we have to have to the ability to have the laboratories and what's the relation between the value of the medications and the entry into a pdp these are things that we're assessing another graph that's quite known it's uh alligator mouth which is the uh, brazilian tr balance trade trade of balance imports and exports and uh and the uh, the rising line is our um, trade surplus for pharmaceutical products and for pharmachemical products as well. We talk about pharmachemicals, but the deficit of pharmachemicals is about 1 billion. If, I'm, I'm, I hope you can see it. Pharmaceuticals, it's 10 billion. So I've seen a graph of Galera uh, showing a gap that you have 25 billion, and uh, that's the gap, the deficit that we have in the health arena. Starting in 2005, the segment got worse. The PDP enable, uh, was able to revert that, reverse. That, is it able to do it? To, to, the PDP was able to reduce that gap. I think that all of these data, they have to do with the G20 goals. Third point that I think is quite important, the growth of biologicals. Biologicals are more expensive, more complex, and they are growing not only in Brazil, but around the world. And we have the difficult, additional difficulty of time, difficulty, cost. And we're going to have to take that into account as well, not only in PDPs, but in the health system overall as a whole. And it's 25%. I can see it well. It's, it has gone up 25%. But lastly, this is the last data, so it won't get too boring. I'd like to present to you positive data about the pharmaceutical industry in Brazil. 
if we don't have uh, uh, revenues, but if ca innovative capabilities, what have they done in Brazil? These data come from a co colleague of mine, Julia Parengos, she's mentioned, she's quoted in our work. We have national companies and foreign companies. If we are to look and compare 2017 and 2000, 2008 and 2008, the uh, investment in, G in, 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 in 170% it was the increase in investments of the red line in the national companies and multinational companies, 47% in 10 years growth. So is, is there a PDP effect of the companies that are in PDP that are investing more in research and development? How do we, is there, is there an effect on the private sector if we can actually disentangle private sector from public sector, governments and private companies? So I'd like to, I, I wanted to give you this uh, bird's eye view of our research agenda. I hope you got curious. I'll bring you one more final outcome. This is one of our main results. Uh, we've, uh, we've, uh, we've sent that to the ministry already. I won't have time to go into detail, but it shows the uh, deviation of prices comparing price deviation for medications, looking at three kinds of um, buyers, the ministry buying via PDP, outside of PDP and other buyers as well. You will see here in red, in red, let's see, uh, that's the ministry buying via PDP. And what it indicates is that we have a line over here and it indicates that the prices are below that line. That is the prices of the, for these medications that we have analyzed, purchased by DLOG via PDP are below the average. And that's all we can say to this point in our research. Uh, of these medications analyzed when purchased by PDP, were, they were bought below average. So, uh, so we couldn't actually uh, say that the prices were paid above the average through PDP. It's quite the opposite. We, we have other data, but we're going to save them for September, our anniversary. That's pretty much what I had to tell you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Graziella. Really, this was a very relevant topic, surely, for this um, symposium for Biomanganos. It's one of the units that does lots of PDPs, and it's related to the topics that Alexander was talking about on the issue of the importance of uh, local production. In addition to the price being below average, it generates jobs and technological development and uh, development of the productive chain in Brazil as the study is still ongo ongoing, right? So I'm going to give the floor now to Patricia Boza, a researcher at Fire Cruz at the Oswald Cruz Foundation, and she's also a member of the Brazilian Academy of Sciences, and she'll be talking about this instance of the G20 in the health arena. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you, participating in this um, discussion table, and to present to you the work we've been doing and we've been discussing in the realm of F20, which is Science 20. S20, uh, Science 20, we have in the Science 20 uh, our topic for a discussion for the year at science for tra global transformation. And this, um, this uh, Science 20, as was said before in previous presentations, it is an engagement group and the, within the G20 umbrella, it's, it has set forth to discuss and make contributions from science to public policies. And this was a group created starting in 2017, geared to the area of science and technology. It is made up, it was composed, and it was founded in a forum of discussion among various uh, academic institutions of the 19 academic mem uh, members of the, G of the G20 plus the European Union, the Academy of the European Union. It works in similar fashion to the G20. It's a rotation system. And it aims at proposing uh, main topics in science and technology for discussion together with other G20 member states. These are the academies and academic institutions that make up the G20. This group, group was taken in our um, uh, first meeting uh, at the onset of our work at the S20 here in Rio in March. And it ha we had the presence of uh, 18 of the 19 
uh, members and mem member countries plus the, the uh, European Union and they uh, and how does it work? The S20, how does it work? It's important for you to understand the dynamics of work, the work dynamic. In Brazil, we've been discussing the, uh, the agenda for the meeting since last year. We've been, we set up a group, a work group in the different areas and in the Brazilian Academy of Sciences. We have been, we've been working in five main areas. These five main areas are clearly very convergent and that there's been a great deal of exchange of information. And one of the areas is the area that I coordinate in terms of discussions. These are the uh, challenges to science, but there are other areas as well. Uh, and artificial intelligence, bioeconomy, economy, uh, uh, energy transition and social justice and clearly the areas all interact and integrate a document that Brazilian Academy of Sciences has proposed a work agenda that was shared with uh, the other academies that has been discussed. We had that discussion initially in March. At a moment, at, at, at all the work is being rediscussed to incorporate and suggestions to, so that they'll be presented at the final meeting. The final meeting of the S20 will be held in June, uh, the 1st and 2nd of June here in Rio de Janeiro as well. And it will take place uh, in a, with a live audience. And they, uh, when it comes to health um, challenges, that's uh, what we said before. Ambassador Alexander pointed out that there are very wide ranging issues, the focus and the topic of challenges that health challenges that will be the, the challenges will, that will be discussed have to do with quality equity and access we have to keep in mind that the 2030 agenda is there we are already in 2024 but we're still far from reaching uh, essential points on the uh, 2030 agenda and the look of that document from the academy is geared to that problem so aspects of um, the look at science in the area of health challenges geared to, to ensuring uh, that health will be accessible to everyone and well-being, the well-being of the population will be ensured. And uh, it's also geared to the reduction of inequalities and working on the topics uh, of the 2030 agenda. And it's important also that we think uh, they uh, also have uh, a uh, one of the topics of uh, the main topics of our agenda is the discussion of um, on climate change and environmental changes and their impact on the health of the population. So this work has been developed along these main axes, uh, uh, prevention, preparedness and access geared to not only to infectious diseases, but also to chronic and degenerative diseases and cancer. And there is an, the digital health with a look on the to, towards surveillance and, uh, and the use of digital science also as a way to allow for equity and easier access and wider access. One of the important topics for discussion also is, are the aspects related to mental health. So regarding prevention, preparedness and access, uh, and we are here discussing uh, during this week, uh, uh, having a discussion that is key for this um, debate around vaccines and actions and immunobiologicals uh, driven towards prevention. So this is an important size of this discussion where the prevention, the initial prevention is essential to allow equity and sustainability and long-term regarding the public health services. 
So this is one of the topics that are key for our, of our agenda. And it's uh, paramount that we think about the basic science and translational in all of these aspects, uh, driven towards as well the training, local training for uh, actually being able to have access, equity, and uh, development, and in the preparedness for epidemics and the maintenance of health. So one of the aspects that are fundamental is uh, interaction and research and scientific collaboration that allows the progress in science and technology. One of the aspects that have been discussed is then uh, allowing access of medicine, the essential pharmaceutical products and technology and platforms that allow the development, the quick development of vaccines and monoclonal vaccines and other tools for emerging diseases and also infectious diseases. And this must be a priority for the research agenda. Also the rational use and the development of new antibiotics and other alternatives that uh, include vaccines, antibodies, monoclonals, uh, other emerging therapies uh, driven towards the microbionic, mi microbial resistance policies and interventions that are also focused on chronic and degenerative diseases. And it's very important to think in the system where strategies, communication strategies uh, are also considered. We went through a period where information and the misuse of information and fake news were very much present. And we had this very clearly in the pandemic. So it's fundamental that we uh, involved in this debate and that we uh, conquer aspects that are regarding, that regards uh, information and health and also have uh, the participation of community in the research agenda and the discussions around it and that we have mechanisms that allow the collaboration and the uh, in, in for, uh, that we have the participation of the population in this research agenda. So regarding climate change and other alterations regarded to the environment, in addition to s food and water security, which are essential issues in this uh, topic, we have been working in a vision that is driven towards uh, one health concept. And we are thinking here, uh, uh, one health being a wide perspective where the training of local capacity of research is essential in this mechanism that it's driven towards the one health concept. And so we have where we have an interaction between health human health, um, environment, animal health, and so then these aspects uh, that are very close to each other. So we take looking, perceiving, uh, observing the environment and in this uh, dynamic, and we are seeing the floods and the south and we have seen the droughts in the Amazon. And again, as it was well put here in uh, Minister Alexandri, the vision that 
the more vulnerable population will be more impacted by the climate changes. In addition of thinking as well, and there is this is a topic that has been very much discussed uh, amongst the academy and scholar entities and the quality of water and the contamination of water, soil, and atmosphere. And an example of this is the contamination by mercury, which has great impacts on health. And for example, the indigenous population with uh, severe impacts. And this is also a field that requires uh, the research uh, observation and intervention in this document. So another issue that has been discussed is mental health. This is an area that is out being neglected within public health, uh, and it is a essential topic for us to address and uh, considering the adult population, but also teenagers and children. And also uh, one of the strategies to address the issue of the challenges in mental health has been discussed and proposed in this agenda. And also, again, very much driven towards the prevention to uh, making access uh, possible and mitigating uh, the inequalities. But it's very important, the importance of the investment in technology uh, for this area, uh, either uh, regarding uh, the last topic, the digital health, as that uh, makes accessible to the population through telemedicine and other ways of making possible the access and the prevention regarding uh, mental health. And lastly, one of the topics that we have been also discussing uh, frequently regarding digital di uh, science, which is has an impact in health and surveillance. So looking at the usage of big data and metadata with the tools that are important for mitigating the inequalities in addition to uh, making ac accessible uh, for the uh, populations in remote areas or of difficult access. So these are different initiatives that are focused on different po uh, proposals and re that regards digital science in a way that uh, uh, to pos make possible the access to this uh, One Health uh, system. And lastly, uh, other issues that are essential for this science agenda, as I have mentioned, is uh, how to strengthen uh, basic science fields and translational science fields and in the research agenda that uh, allows a strong collaboration uh, driven towards the capacity of local research, and this is essential for the discussion of mitigating uh, inequalities and involving the different agents in the science ecosystem within in the uh, decision-making mechanisms and the elaboration of the uh, science agenda, and also this perspective of uh, the capacity of surveillance that is driven by open science and the sharing of data and information. 
to allow quick responses for new emergencies in health and also technology transfers and an environment that is actually uh, collaborative and with local collaboration for priori uh, priority technologies in health and other areas that are also very much driven towards um, areas in health and to make feasible other areas in, for development of research in this area. So this is the S20 Brazil, and these documents are being uh, ma are available in the websites, and these are documents that are under uh, elaboration. So the results of these discussions of the academy, we have today the preliminary version that is being uh, worked on. Then until July, up until July, we will have the final version. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patricia. So we are getting to the end, and we ha don't have much time. And I want a, I want a symbolic question from the audience. If someone is willing to uh, make, uh, make a question, I'm going to ask something to Ambassador Alexandre. And uh, Ambassador, I think that's something interesting to be mentioned is the PDPs, the Partnership for Productive Developments, they could be included maybe in the proposal for this uh, and uh, this alliance for local production. And how do you perceive the reaction of other countries to this proposal and the set of proposals from Brazil? I d could not see no one uh, volunteering for the uh, any questions from the audience. Uh, thank you, Pedro. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you all for the presentations that were very interesting to me. It's very good to know that there is this reflection being made in the uh, health field and the possibilities is open for us to carry out the initiatives and projects in the national sphere. So answering your questions, there's two issues. The proposal of this alliance is to be an inclusive network that comprehends also the private sector. This means that we are thinking of projects that include uh, international organizations, uh, financial institutions, uh, and also the private sector and the governmental sec uh, sec uh, uh, bodies. So this will be a fit to each area of interest and affinities. But the idea to work when the private sector is present since the beginning of the proposal, and we hope that this uh, uh, engages the large number of actors in, in the production in the public field and also the private sector. And other countries, there is only uh, mainly private, the private sector. So we want to engage these agents. And the second, the second question was uh, yes regarding the reception on. Uh, from the countries, the other countries. Yes, uh, so we have been, uh, have seen a very rich debate regarding of how this alliance should be organized and not regarding it if there should be an alliance, which for not us is a very positive indicator. There is no questioning regarding the convenience of having this alliance and how to do it and how to make it productive and efficient. So the dynamics of this debate is uh, happening and it, this makes us seeing the possibility in getting a consensus up to the end of the year. So how the President Reagan used to say, the own, the game only ends when it uh, is finished. So this means that we will only have a result when it's uh, 
registered in the ministerial meeting. Before that, we will see, still be under discussions, and the circumstances that we are working with uh, makes us believe that we have a very good chance of having a positive outcome. Thank you very much, uh, Alexandre. I believe we are reaching the end. It's important to observe the convergence of the theme. So the S20 uh, working with the same teams as T20. So I would like to thank uh, the pre uh, your presence here. We don't have uh, so much time, enough time to work with this uh, such a comprehensive themes that we 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 know that the G20 are working with many areas, including health. And those who want to uh, see, we're going to have another seminary on Wednesday about the G20, focused on the health field, and it's going to happen at Fiocruz website. So I would like to thank Graziella, Patrícia, Alexandre. I. Hope you all like to be here. Thank you very much. Obrigada, Pedro. Obrigada as nossas apresentações. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, our presenter, and also uh, the presenters.